Here we go. This special episode of Cop Block Radio is filmed live in Keene, New Hampshire. We are live in the studio with Severin Freeman, Lehigh Valley Cop Block. We got Rick R. Ricardo Gonzalez from Allentown Cop Block and... And J.P. Freeman and Ethan Glover from New Hampshire Regional Cop Block. We decided to take this trip down here in honor of the studio being raided by a bunch of punks with badges. They, uh, the guys came down, came into this studio, ran up in it. I wish I had been present because I would have given them a nice piece of my mind. But I live all the way in Pennsylvania. But I made plans as soon as I heard what happened to get down here. Me and Ethan were cob lock until 5 a.m., literally an hour before they showed up here. So you were asleep when it happened? Not really. We didn't. We just got home when it happened. Did you make it up here? No, we didn't even know. Until, we, until I woke up from tw- at 12.30, that's when I knew that the place got raided. No phone calls, no radio calls, nothing. Well, by some kind of libertarian genie magic, Ian... Has the studio up and running again. Yeah, I guess uh, their cell phones were taken and everything was saved, so they couldn't communicate with anybody. Well, I mean, I just see it as a miracle that the station was able to be up and running so quickly that the support that poured in was so awesome. I came down here because I He's a just, genius. I, I, I decided, you know, I've been putting off a trip down here. I want to see the Shire. It's time to come down here, visit, see the local cop lockers, Get familiar with the area, and I want to go say hi to those feds. I really want to go find them. You got to go to Virginia. No, nah, they're not out of Virginia. Those feds came out of a local office. I want to go find that office and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says I'm insane. They said that they're going to put me in a, a, a dark cage or, or a black site. Nobody will know where I'm at. That'd be nice. Do, do, do you know if anybody around here knows if there's a federal office? FBI office here? I, I don't know. I planned on just looking it up. I figured that somebody would know. I, I, I would guess that on the warrant I'm, itself, they it would have said what office it was out Virginia. of. Virginia. Does it? The warrant? No. It was Boston. Ah, oh, Boston. That's still far. Not really. It's not maybe, too far from here. Maybe we'll here. stop on our way back. <laughs> I don't know. Do I, I just really want to alert the local public of who the real criminals are because the FBI ran a child porn site. As a lot of people who listen to this station know, they were reported on by this radio station, and it's suspected that since the time frame was a week later, that that is why they chose to raid. That is why they chose to choose this studio, this place, to come into and push around to let everybody know. Well, there's a lot of other things going on, too, Um, not cop lock related, more community liberty related which i've been i've lost a ton of friends over this stupid petition and you know you you've been keeping up with what's yeah going on. yeah that uh the whole free state project and everything going on with them that, that's the other thing that i wanted to come into town for because i had a couple of days where i was like you know what Keene's not worth it uh moving there's not worth it signing that thing i'm, I'm i publicly said i rescind my signature i no longer Jess- to that. jessica my wife jessica phillips or oh, liberty lady um, she's an early mover, and she rescinded her name. She wants nothing to do with FSP anymore. Well, I mean, I... I she came here from Texas. I know that you have posted stuff still supporting moving here. I know uh, Ian has supported still moving here and supports the movement still happening. So I really wanted to come and just see where it, where it, it, where all the drama is. Like, the, it, Are these people even anything in this town that you even need to worry about? Because to me, it sounds like it's a small group that's just a bunch of troublemakers. Well, the, the the group that you're thinking of has nothing to do with what's going on with FSP. Um, they're just a hate group that, that basically targets, specifically targets people and fills them up with lies. And they just make fun of them basically on their websites and uh, on their threads. Are you talking about the Stop Key, Free Keen Stop movement? Free, yeah. And I filed a Superior Court lawsuit against them today on a on a federal injunction because they left a recorder inside the closed hearing during my family case and I was approached by 
Detective Joel Chichester this morning at our house because the court filed the charge against them. Oh, that's fantastic. So uh, you got woken up to police at your door at because nine o'clock. somebody committed a crime against you. Yeah, at 9 o'clock, uh, me being a victim, yeah. Um, and I, and, and I think I, I think I would have just told him to kick rocks, but I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't really. Well, it, the, the filing is real. I, I filed it today. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm labeled like this big, big, uh, oh, he, JP's just going to sue you. I've only went after two people since I've been up here and, and they were both state agencies. Did you hear about our lawsuit? No. We got a, we, we won in court. Did I tell you about that? No. Oh man. We went to, uh. For our arrest, me and Rick and our friend Scott, we're all filming outside of police, uh, state state police barracks in Pennsylvania, and the guys just walked out and arrested us for no reason whatsoever. You, you too? Yeah. Yeah, all three of us. What did they do to you? Uh, they did the most to him. They, he didn't have an ID on him, so they subjected him to- Did you pull the race card on him? Nah, they- uh, <laughs> They really wanted to ID him, I'll tell everything. you that much. They took him- <laughs> They, they, he had ID on him, just not a legal state ID. He had his insurance card and everything. They wouldn't yeah, you, take, don't, you don't have to have one here. They, they wouldn't take none of that. They're like, no, we're fingerprinting you. We want to see who you really are. They were <laughs> determined. Well, yeah. they ended up losing. They got beat. Our, uh, we had two really, really good lawyers that wanted this case to make an example out of the state police. They support being able to film cops and everything. It's nice to win. It was really nice to have. Uh, it's like a big law firm out of Philly that, that you Google them and they they tear apart co- cops left and right for their misdeeds. So this guy, they took my case and they took our case and they won in court and it was awesome. Well, that that's the thing, and that's the thing with this uh, Stop Free King group. When you have an entity just like the police that specifically target people, I think it's wrong. Lawfully, it's wrong and it's illegal. They shouldn't be able to just target people. And be and be uh, okay. This person's this, 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 and this, and put it on an open forum when ninety percent of it's just not true. You just you just can't do that. Me not being that libertarian, I'm heading that way. Um, I know a lot of folks are like, oh, we don't use the state. We try to use arbitraries and, and mediations. Screw that. If if they love the state and they're statist and they're coming after you. I'm going to use the state to the fullest ability to teach them what the state is all about. So if you're going to <laughs> come after me, their own e- e- exactly. And and this injunction, I can kind of see the logic in that. Yeah, this injunction that I filed today is basically uh, uh, it's a discretionary lawsuit to pull the the video and whatever they've been posting, and uh, it's uh, got a couple restraining orders and like like three or four co defendants um, that I think could be uh, detrimental to my children. And an immediate threat. Now, the I federal... find it really, really ironic. This happens a lot. It does that the cop that the cop supporters are more dangerous than the cops themselves. They're they're out there. I've been. You I've know, had my life you notice, threatened. You notice. I've most had my of... family's photos put all over sites and you... like my house address and like paperwork about me. When you're cop blocking, when you're cop blocking, Rick, do you notice? That most of the people that stick up for the police, they're like drunk out of their mind. Yeah, they're idiots. I haven't ran into one yet, but I did run into one that wasn't that wasn't even from Allentown, and he stopped to question me why I was filming the police in Allentown. <laughs> There's a lot of videos on YouTube you that with that alone. happening. Uh, actually, a funny funny one that I just thought of uh, recently: Brian Sumner put one up from Fresno, California, about a uh, he was filming this drunk guy getting roughed up and arrested. And then for the next 10 minutes, while the cops are getting everything together to take him away, this guy sees Brian and seems to film's uh, F the police shirt <laughs> and just goes nuts. <laughs> I'm in the backseat and I support these guys. They're doing their job. <laughs> oh, it was the funniest thing. This guy is – that's cognitive dissonance at its best. You're, you're in the back of a car for consuming something you're allowed to consume that you haven't done anything wrong other than consuming too much of it, according to them. Right. But you're still going to stand by and support them and scream your praises. Well, we will be right back with our top stories of the night. An awesome story update out of New York. On this special episode of Top Block Radio.
The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government control 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up at any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. Now that you've found the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM, you may want to help expose others to our great programs. To assist you in doing so, you'll find resources at promote.lrn.fm, including details on how to get a free bumper sticker, quarter-page flyers you can print out and distribute, banners for your website, as well as files that will allow you to make your own custom banners and graphics. Visit promote.lrn.fm and help bring new listeners to the Liberty Radio Network. That's promote.lrn.fm. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. When you AMP Free Talk Live, you get perks like access to the AMP-only Facebook group and AMP podcast. Visit amp.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Welcome back. Top Block Radio. Ethan has a story for us coming up. It's our top story of the night. Last week we talked about uh, the cop in New- the cops in New York that stopped a mailman and arrested him while he was delivering mail. The story went viral and uh the obviously the story of who these cops actually are came to light over the last week. So go ahead and take it. Yeah, so this was uh, apparently the, the reason for the arrest on this was uh, 
that he, he basically yelled at the officers for cutting him off. You know, and this was, uh, I got the list of the names of police officers here. It's Luis Machado, Lazo Luca, Miguel Rodriguez, and David Zavella on the 71st Precinct in New York. And apparently this isn't their first. They've had a lot of issues in the past, uh, according to this story. Uh, it says in the last six years, three of the four officers involved in his arrest have been named as defendants in federal civil suits. Uh, from false arrest to other forms of misconduct, which is exactly what this situation was—a false arrest, as uh, the the precinct has already agreed. So there, are, the precinct actually came out in su- not in support of the officers' actions. Right. So right now, the un- internal affairs is pushing forward with there needs to be some sort of disciplinary disciplinary action on these officers. Wow, this never happened. So what did it take? Just is really just the video. I think it made it pretty obvious. That but didn't, the, didn't these officers, didn't it come to light now that these officers, this isn't their first time? Yeah, well, it doesn't, I can't see, uh, I don't see any what their past issues are, but it sounds like this is something they do a lot where they'll, any minor issue, stop people. And these guys were not even in uniform. They were in plain clothes arresting somebody. There's no way for those for that mailman to know who they are. It could have been anyone. I hope the mailman got a lawyer. I want to see a big lawsuit from that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he will. So so these guys, uh, it it turns out that they have several complaints against them, right, Rick? You yep. were looking this up uh, earlier, too. You were telling uh, me about this got, on the drive Yeah, they over. got uh, a history of uh, civil rights violations and complaints on them. And I'm surprised they're still on the streets. Well, because the, they messed with ordinary citizens every other time. And this time they messed with a federal employee while he was on the clock. Isn't that, isn't uh, isn't it a federal offense to uh, tamper with the mail? I know if I grab the uh, mail, man, that's a federal offense. There's actually a whole separate thing you got to deal with uh, as far as arresting a federal employee, especially on the job. They can't leave that truck unsecure, which is what they what did. They, did that. Yeah. Yeah. they left that thing wide open. Right, yep. exactly. And then not only that, they were also taunting him while he was in custody, like bad mouthing him and. You know, just being real assholes. This poor him. guy. He, he didn't he's do anything. He's out there delivering the mail and in his postal uniform with a bag over his shoulder. Almost gets hit by a car. He probably didn't even know it was cops at first. No, he didn't. Because it was an undercover cop car and plainclothes officer. Yeah. Oh, well, you just messed with the gang. We're undercover today. <laughs> wow. So They get yelled at. They were offended, so they had to well, arrest Well, I guy. mean, I guess for anybody who wants accountability, this looks good, but... It's a matter of uh, these officers need to be off the streets for yeah, good. Well, they're getting off the streets now, but what about criminal prosecution? They might get charged. I want right. to see if they actually get convicted. I guess who actually faces the con- or consequences is taxpayers paying out to the city. It's not like the yeah, officers. Yeah, how does that work? Are, yeah, exactly. Uh, do the, does the federal dollars pay him or does state dollars pay him? It'll or probably, does both? It'd probably be the state. Uh, definitely not the officers. They're not going to feel the real consequences if uh, they're ruled against. It never happens that way. Well, uh, I mean, he's able to get... I'm sure he's on workman's comp at this point, so it's nice to know that he's actually... Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if he's delivering mail still, but I can't imagine you go back to work after something like that happens. I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure he still has his job. Uh, because uh, the video doesn't lie. The was man just, did nothing wrong. He was out doing his job and they just came along and just asked him for ID and uh when he refused to show his ID I guess they just started handcuffing him and taking him away <laughs> yeah and you can see in the video one of the officers telling the postal guy you know don't uh, we don't want to hurt you we're going to well, hurt cra- you <laughs> uh, what re- what really stood out to me even more than the arrest was the people's reaction People yeah. aren't staying silent anymore. It was almost no, broke down. Pissed. They had to get out of there quick. There was about to be a, a, something breaking off. Yeah. So they were gonna, somebody was going to go after those cops. That's why they got them into the car as fast as they could and took off and left the postal car unattended. Yep. Well, all the mail, people's mail in it. Wow. Well, it's good to know that they're going to be off the job, but I want to see them all Hopefully, off the job. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm not... I'm not with the accountability movement says anymore. Uh, I want to see abolishment. This there's is been no much. change in status for these guys. They haven't been transferred or fired or suspended, nothing. And I guess the 71st precinct, there's been 15 complaints so far this year. Last year, there were 78 total. 
made by so civilians. far this yeah. year. There's 15 complaints. Oh, there's plenty more to go. I'm sure. Wow. Listen, that's not. And those the are only... just the ones that come forward. What about the people that just say it's not worth it and let it go? Yeah, oh well, I, exactly. Yes. New York's sure one of the it, New York's it, one of those states that uh, we drove past New York today, and I, I wanted to stop and film some cops. And Rick's like, ah, I don't know, man. We might we might get dead. New York <laughs> is pre- pretty hardcore. Yeah, New York. Yeah. Is, you can't just Rick's like you can't just pull out a camera and film them in New York. They're they're gonna get you. <laughs> They'll come after you. Yeah, you see that one riding the AT wheeler. He's riding his uh, AT. Uh, What's those things called? The four wheelers? The ATV. ATVs, yeah. yeah. Cop just pulls up and pull, points his gun at him. Wow! <laughs> wow! Like I ran. Yeah, I think I saw that video. That that, that cop. Yeah, he he walked up and just pulled his gun right yeah. away. Without this even, this is how he starts a traffic stop. Just pulls out the gun. No, and, he didn't, it wasn't he even a traffic even stop. Tra- the guy just, was stopped. He was yeah. chilling. The he cop just pulled just pulls right up next to him and just points his. Pistol wow. Yeah, I guess they got a call, a complaint that he was riding around. The guy had stopped at this point. He was standing next to his ATV. <laughs> the cop pulls up, pulls his gun out, and just uh, starts waving it around. It's all on Jesus. video, acting like a maniac. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it happened out here? Oh, this was the... Wow. Uh, yeah, this is a, a cop who pulled her gun on, a, on her husband, I believe. And uh, she just went in. I don't think there are any... As far as I know, there weren't any criminal charges. She went just went to some sort of training, you know, and came back a few months Safety later. Safety training class. Yeah, exactly. Two, two weekends, two, two uh, half-day weekends, and you're good to go. Pulled out a gun and threatened somebody's life. Meanwhile, if one of us pulls a gun, the, uh, Winchester, if one of us even touches a gun, if it's on our hip legally, they can try to say they feared for their lives. Oh, yeah. I just saw a video earlier on coplock.org of a... Uh, these cops were at an apartment building. Had a security camera down on the stairwell. Dog comes out of the. Oh, dude. Door. Yeah. Oh, man. This is yeah, the worst he's, he's story. He's being friendly, wagging his tail, and the dude just backs off, shoots him, and walks down the stairs. He's hidden for the rest of the video. He's hiding out. Yeah, we were going to talk about that oh, tonight, yeah. so we could jump into that. This is this was one of the most. You know, I, I see this video right after I see a, a police supporter page that posted about dog uh, dog lives. Uh, about their police dog lives, meaning uh, like they want criminal charges oh, yeah, steeper if you, if you hurt a police dog. Yeah. And I see this video right afterwards of this cop shooting a dog who's wagging his tail. This dog was literally wagging yeah. his tail. Just it looked like a smiling, friendly dog. Like Obviously not a threat. What is wrong with these cowards? They're cowards. As JP would say, cowards. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with more. Cop Block Radio. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. I know this sounds unbelievable, but at my house, we saved as much as 45% off of a new item on Amazon. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Wednesday, gold is $11 lower at $1,233 per ounce. Silver is down $0.13 cents at $15.38 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at 413 U.S. dollars. Roberts and Roberts Brokerage has been helping customers buying and selling precious metals for nearly 40 years. How may we help you? Give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. Money, power, and respect are all yours at creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. 
We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate us five stars, then share the link on your social media and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. We are back. <laughs> Trying to hold it together here. <laughs> we With just, our special we, live edition from the LRN Studios. <laughs> JP's losing it. Oh, we just Lord. having fun, man. What a night. What a week. Dude, I just drove five hours here. That was an exciting... Hey, I made the trip too, bro. That was exciting. You did not warn me that Connecticut was like Nazi Germany. We didn't go through Connecticut. Yeah, or wait, what, what state was that? Uh, Not Connecticut. Uh, Rhode Island? No, it's... No, Probably it was mass. Connecticut. It was Connecticut. Connecticut. Connecticut's yeah. pretty beefed up, We too. came up through Connecticut. They have some uh, gray undercover SUVs. That's Connecticut. And it yeah. was on both sides of the road, and they were just literally, like, they were one after another parked, and they were literally just grabbing every out-of-state driver one after another, and I managed to slip through because the car behind me was from New York. They grabbed the car behind me, and didn't get me. I man, I get to the other side, and I'm looking at my GPS and see that the road opens up. I'm like, I am out. I need to get out of this state right now. <laughs> that was messed up. Like, where they had one person? How is that even legal? I don't even it know. Shouldn't but they they had, shouldn't they be. They shouldn't be. Somebody with New Hampshire tags. It, it's specific. Girl. It's specific targeting, man. I keep telling you, man. They they had this poor girl with New Hampshire tags. I, I felt like pulling over, sitting on the guardrail, confused on what the hell is going on. This cop is just tearing up her car. Yeah, all her blankets, all and her everything. everything on the side of the road. Oh, uh, I, I, I really that could be your house, man. I really wanted to pull over and try to what film and, like, and, and be there for support. <laughs> That's but, not even right. Excuse me. I, I had uh, possible legality issues uh, driving through that state, so I didn't want to mess with it. Yeah, that's how I am in Mass. I can't do shit in Mass. Yeah, I I just didn't want to. I, I did not want to encounter the cops until if I you got owe, here safely. If you owe five dollars to the state of Mass, you will have a warrant out for your arrest. Hmm. Really? Yep. Well, it's all about the money, right? They they rather spend twenty two thousand dollars. In prosecuting a case, than to just sit on the five bucks. Yeah, well, Pennsylvania is no better. They just uh, Matt, our other co-host, that's usually on, 
just had his case. Uh, he, he goes to court for a DUI that he didn't have. His blood work showed that he was clean. And he gets there, and his lawyer's like, yeah, you don't have to plead to this. You're innocent. You, your blood work is clean. Well, the DA decides to move forward with the case anyway. <laughs> Jeez. Isn't his job supposed to be to say if there's a case or not? I'm sorry, Matt. I think he Mr. beat that. Mr. Taylor, we love you, but damn. He yeah, beat that. They, they, they rigged all, you, man. Yeah, he beat it. it he beat that. He beat that. He beat it. Yeah. So right there in preliminary, he didn't even have to move up to the next court. The lawyer did did basically what our lawyer did. just went in there and just... There was nothing a lawyer needed to do. All he had to do was open up the paper and say, hey, look, blood report is clean. There's nothing there. They tried to say he was drunk. That's crazy. Well, well I, for, first, before we go any further, I just want to tell the folks that... We have uh, Severin Freeman and uh, Ricky from uh, Allen Allentown Coplock and uh, Lehigh Valley Coplock, Lehigh Valley, um, and uh, Ethan Glover and myself. We're all gonna we're doing an event from today till Saturday, and tomorrow morning we're gonna be doing "Don't Take a Plea" and then court outreach in the court and uh, show them the ropes about uh, how the court system works here during the arraignment day, and they get a lot of arraignments tomorrow, and how I get in cops' faces there and. And uh, call out the prosecutors. It should be a fun time. We're going to go to Free Coast. And then Friday night, we're meeting up at 6 p.m. with uh, co-founder of coplock.org, Pete Ayer. And we're going to have dinner with him and sit down with some folks and uh, have a great time. Coplock in Manchester. And we're going to hit Nashua as well. And then uh, maybe we, we'll do the uh, Free Coast later on to, uh, tomorrow night. Um, but it's going to be fun, man. I think you guys have, are going to have a blast. You're going to have me needing a vacation after my vacation. I'm going to be worn out. Bro, when we went up there, when me and Jess went up to the Lehigh Valley, man, I was done. <laughs> done. The drive killed me. Dude, we stayed out till 3 in the morning. After oh. driving after driving five hours straight, I literally cop locked with you till like 4.30. We didn't get back. Yeah, it was pretty late. And, and our ladies were but gone we, for the count. Yeah, we, we wanted to come back, but we just couldn't stop because one after another kept getting pulled over right in front of us. It was a good and night. And then you brought me to that Celtic Fest thing. Oh, yeah. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania has some of the best festivals. You should see Music Fest. It's 10 times that size. Wow. They said, I think they said. Officer Peacock didn't like me, though. Yeah, I remember Peacock. He's kind of yeah. funny. The worst thing you can do to me, Sev. Is tell me, oh, that guy picked on me once. <laughs> what do you think JP's got to do? I didn't even tell you that. I said I don't like that guy. I got, I, I, I was filming a traffic stop, and they, had, this guy had a suspended license, and they were going to tow his car. And I was just like, you know what, dude, give me permission to drive your car. I'm a legal driver. And they, uh, the cop wouldn't give me the keys. He's like, no, it's being towed. You can't do that. What I was like, what do you mean head. you can't do that? He's a dick I, and I tried to go get. The, I was going to get in the car and drive off. Regardless to what he said, I like and, the I like the video Ricky had with uh, the cop pushing me, and then <laughs> after saying he didn't push me, he actually admitted it later, yeah. and then apologized. <laughs> uh, the cops, just, uh, cops of our are kind of fun. They've I got beha- him. I got him to incriminate himself. <laughs> they've been behaving really, really good lately. I gotta tell you, that was my, kind of funny. My, my local cops have been on their best behavior. Same thing with Allentown cops, his town. Like we we we. Put him in check. I, I they mean, I made the police chief retire in the in uh in in the next town over from my town. Yeah, but that doesn't count the hidden investigations, the stings, the the warrant searches, and stealing people's property. That doesn't count all the stuff that's behind the scenes that you don't see, and and those are the things that that we need to try to figure out how to get more video of, instead of fake wannabe activists taking taking a little little picture through their window this big oh there's feds across the street <laughs> let's stay in our house and not video record <laughs> oh man not me i'll be there as close as i can be to get there get them on tape yeah rick's out there he's a trooper yeah he, he's the only guy i've ever seen that rocks two cell phones at once he does one you know who i wish was here believe it or not who? dave ridley who's that He's he's a an an area, an area activist that's been recording public officials for like forever. Okay. Um, he he is some of the things I don't agree with, but I love his videos. I would I I would have liked to see his approach to a situation like that. I really I really would. To the federal situation. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, from what I understood, there were people out there asking questions. Oh, you can see. Oh, you can see everybody. Renee Cade up on on the video. You guys are a piece of shit. 
All right, this is not my show, but I've got to interject here, kids. <laughs> you guys are so adorable, you fucking casual noobs. Here I am on my porch, no cell phone, nothing, while the feds are raiding my fucking house. Like, <laughs> let me just tell you guys, it was a si- the scariest thing about it was the radio silence because the first thing they did, they came in, they took everybody's phone, so no one could record what was going on in here. They wouldn't let me in my house once I show up. Nobody came came outside. Across really. the street, had they, they were watching the whole thing they from their window. They didn't know what was going on, and they, they certainly didn't want to get it. involved. But they're not they're not like us. I came outside, and I'm like, you motherfuckers need to answer some questions right now. But they wouldn't tell you what was going on, anyways. So the best thing I could do was stand outside and just run my fucking mouth at them because there was nothing else I could do. But my first concern, were you going screaming? Back, oh, I was bullshit. You didn't see like, the video. Once no. I realized they were FBI, I was bullshit. I'm like, you need to get my fucking dog out here right now because I was convinced they shot my dog. Oh man, I know. I, I had no idea. Once I saw they were feds, I was like, fuck, get my dog out here now. And, so. and be, be, oh, before man. you leave, introduce yourself and what show were you from? Oh, this is Renee Kate from Anarchy After Dark. Hey guys, what's up? What's up? Friday, well, LRN. That, that's FM, called 10 that's PM called Cop Blog Radio ambush, right motherfuckers there. Yeah. ambushed. <laughs> hey, hey, it's cool to get somebody firsthand that was actually here to experience the fun of the FBI. Oh, you can you can definitely hear it, and and I've witnessed it out on out on the street as well. I'm surprised, you know, I I I, I am surprised that it's not more tore up. Like I expect it. I don't know what I expect it walking up to the house. I guess I expect it like stuff knocked over and like broken windows and all kinds of craziness. Like you never know. They come in and they do whatever they, they want. Did the whole thing very delicately. Well. That's because they know the cop lock. But they're thieves, <laughs> they're thieves nonetheless. Well, we're going to be right back with an insane invention someone made that's going to change cop locking possibly. A stand up toilet? Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. The Free State Project has reached its goal of 20,000 liberty lovers who've pledged to move to New Hampshire and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Perhaps you're trying to figure out what part of New Hampshire should be your destination. If so, consider Keene. You'll find more than 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com. Keene is famous for its historic, publicity-generating activism, as well as being the liberty media capital of the world. It's home to freekeene.com, New Hampshire's destination for liberty activism, news, and opinion. For years, we've been compiling over 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com, where you'll learn about some of what's happening here and what makes Keene a great place to live. If you love liberty, you'll probably enjoy anywhere you end up in the Shire. But do your due diligence first. Please visit move.freekeen.com for the full list of over 150 reasons to move to Keene. That's move.freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for LRN.FM are, one, let your friends know you're listening to LRN.FM on your social networking profile. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.lrn.fm. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program at amp.lrn.fm. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same great prices, and LRN gets a cut. Please do your online shopping at shop.lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Did you know you can get news updates about what's happening with the Liberty Radio Network delivered in the way you prefer? 
You can sign up for our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. Plus, you can stay in the loop by joining our Facebook profile at facebook.lrn.fm or follow us at Twitter at twitter.lrn.fm. It's all free. So sign up now at updates.lrn.fm for news updates delivered to your email box, facebook.lrn.fm to follow our Facebook page, and twitter.lrn.fm to receive our tweets. Arcade City is a ride-sharing app built by drivers for drivers. It's more decentralized than Uber and Lyft. With Arcade City, you can keep all of what you earn. Sign up now to drive for Arcade City at arcade.freetalklive.com. Arcade City was created by New Hampshire Liberty activist Christopher David. When he publicized the idea in January 2016, he hoped to recruit 100 drivers by the end of the month. Instead, he blew past his goal with over 1,300 drivers signing up in just two weeks. Arcade City is connecting drivers directly with riders and is disrupting the already disrupted transportation industry. If you want to get involved, you can join as a rider or a driver. To ride with Arcade City, visit arcaderide.freetalklive.com. To drive with Arcade City, visit arcade.freetalklive.com. That's arcade.freetalklive.com to drive or arcaderide.freetalklive.com to ride with Arcade City. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We are back. Taking selfies in the studio during the commercial break. Yeah, and we're, vlogs. We, we're totally shameless. And, and video blogs. Hey, listen. This is kind of exciting for me. You know what? I got involved in Cop Block about... A, mm, almost, coming up on a year now. Before that, I was a registered Democrat. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, just broke my heart. Oh, man. I was a Democrat, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, I get involved... When I realized that things are just so bad, I never knew that there was anything like a free state or like a movement like this. I thought I was the only one that thought the way that I did, and I was happy to stand up for myself, for my rights at any time, but I never really knew that there was a whole movement of people doing this. This this seems to be the case in most places. So yeah, this is like, I don't know. New Hampshire is something else. This is like Vegas for me, I guess. I I don't know. I don't know what you you would consider it, like uh, the Holy Land. We're in the Holy Land. The Holy Land of uh-huh. Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering the, considering the amount of activism that's been going on in Keynes, I lived in Keynes since 06. I was actually looking at looking at it from a towny point of view from the outside in, walking downtown and seeing 35 to 40 activists, and all of a sudden, like, a couple of them are getting arrested. I'm like, hey, what are they getting arrested for? Oh, they just wouldn't move. I'm like, what do you mean they wouldn't move? Oh, that one right there was wearing his hat. That one right there had a fake beer, and that one right there, I don't know what he did. They just arrested him just because. I'm like, what the fuck? What's going on here? People are getting arrested for, like, hats. So that's what made you start to look into cop law? No, no. Uh, my story is different. I actually met Pete coming out of, a, out, of the, out of court during, well, after one of the depositions of uh, making a settlement agreement with the city of Keene and Keene Police Department from the lawsuit I had against them. Um, and he overheard me and I met him and he gave me a card and I'm like, oh, wow, check this out. And then he invited me to the Shire Free Church. I came here one night, met like 30 people that night. Um, and it, and I've been doing cop lock. Uh, he set up some event one August and I went out with him and I've been doing it ever since. I caught awesome. the bug. I caught the bug. And, and, and I despise the, uh, the profession so much already. It was just built in me already. Um, but as as far as the keen activism goes, it's been going down, but it comes in waves. Um, you see it come up, 50 activists, and then it goes down. Yeah, it's nothing to do I with have, these stop-free keen idiots that have nothing to do but pick that, on people. That's the same thing that happens everywhere. Unfortunately, uh, everybody wants to talk online and talk about how much things suck, but when there's an event or something to show up for, it's like twisting arms to get people to come out and actually do well, stand up and well do that, stuff. It, well, that's the thing. I, I think I think activists usually get burnt out um, because usually if you see an activist, it's usually the same activist doing a ton of shit. Yeah. Um, like me and you. 
Yeah. Like me and you have down days where we're like, man, we just got blasted by every single group, at cops. We're getting arrested while losing their house. They told my car. Our kids are getting locked up. I mean, when bad things happen to people like me and you, they happen in like fives and sixes all at once. So the whole world crashes. So we need a break. Yeah. Um, me, I haven't taken one. Even through this whole well, family well, hearing strangely thing. strangely enough, this is my break. This is, that's what this I'm is saying. This is my vacation. That's what I'm saying. I, I literally am on vacation right now. This Th- is... That's what I'm saying. I mean, our break isn't a break. We thank still you. plug Thank it you, up. Free State Project, for being a bunch of douches, because uh, the reason I had the money for this vacation was because it was for Porkfest. Well, since Porkfest is canceled, I said I'm coming well, to the way I the way I fucking look at it is they're, they're an interim government, just like the state, that has a president, a board of directors that want to force control on free speech and free thought, and they're basically getting their facts wrong. I would really like to see the evidence that they had during that during that decision to uh, pull FTL and, and lose all support to Ian Freeman and all the uh, all the things that have to do with Free Talk Live and LRNFM uh, well, you, Talk Radio, Liberty Radio Network. You know, you can just let them dig their own graves. I mean, with or without the FSP as an organization— this is still the place to be. I mean, they're not the ones who have really built this. It's, it's been a ground up, you know, grassroots sort of movement. It's not the organization that's pulling people to the state. It's now, just, now, you guys are on the ground here. Can you, can you explain? Uh, Rick was asking me this on the way up. What is the difference between Free Keen and Free State Project? Well, Free Keen's a blog. Okay. I'm not a blogger of Free Keen. I only, I've only associated with Ian Freeman because he's part of Keen Coplock. He okay. he does Keen Coplock. He's an admin on Keen Coplock, and I my only associate association with Free Keen is because one of cop one of the cop blockers is a Free Keen blogger, and he just so happens to host a, a national syndicate radio show. And how lucky was I to be involved in such a movement? And, and then you had the CAC next door at first, the the Keen Activist Center, which was uh, the birthplace or the incubation of coplock.org. This is where it happened, right here. Um, this is where it incubated. And um, I think Pete Air made a video recently um, about uh, keen activism and, uh, and how it started here. Um, it, it, as far I, I, as learned, I learned a lot of my, my knowledge of the storyline here through Derek J's video. But to ask me about FSP and Free State Project, you don't have to ask my wife because... I'm kind of out of the loop on how they correlate one another because it was it looked like an interim government for me from the beginning, and I said it last last year at uh, Porkfest um, while I was there. I'm like, this kind of seems like it's uh, because I was reading the bylaws, and one of the bylaws of Porkfest was they uh, they are uh, you are subject to have your car searched <laughs> on uh, upon entry. And when who's, I was reading that, I, I want to know who's doing the searching if you're not allowing cops there. The Rangers. <laughs> Pork fest security and a the, search the of cars. Rangers, right? Is that what they call? What exactly would they be looking for? Are they rangers? They're I think so. Rangers, right? I don't well, know. I mean, what are having, they going to find? I mean, everyone's got some... weed. I kept I kept FSP at an arm's length since I've been doing car blog. I, I I don't know about any of it. All I know is that this town has a lot of activists. I like to go out and do activism. That's my main that that is my main goal to come here is to have a bigger group than what I have out my way. I mean, it's impressive. Uh, the things Rich Paul did with four twenty and the four twenty rallies and then uh what was it, um Titty Tuesdays with uh, you know, girls popping out their boobs downtown and there's nothing the the government could do about it. <laughs> the drinking games in City Hall, they they have <laughs> you know, they dr- just drink a water like or, I said, or like, I'm in the Holy Land. This yeah, sounds this sounds perfect. Civ- the civil disobedience and Derek J's uh you know, uh victimless crime spree, most of that was here in Keene. Um and and literally you could see those videos. This is like 30, 35 plus people getting arrested and then you get a demo who gets arrested for a hat. Yeah. Um oh no, I think it was Ian that got arrested for the hat. No, it was it was a demo. Yeah, it was a demo. Um, and then he gets nailed for talking about his friend getting arrested for the hat. <laughs> uh, it's, it sounds like it's it's a lot of fun here, though, because it's more than just one person going out. Like my- even even though I didn't, I I'm I wasn't a big fan of Robin Hood, um, but the activism and and the the type of airplay that that got was huge. 
Like they were on Fox News. They were talking about it on all the other the uh, the comedian shows, late night comedian shows. I, um, I've noticed that, that that trend changing over the last year. That nobody's done the, it. The mainstream media actually talks about cop lockers a little bit. Uh, some of them actually talk about them directly, some of them indirectly, but it gets talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just in my newspaper, my local news, that my next town over police chief retired, or no, not retired, I'm sorry, resigned. And his reason for resigning was, he worded it special, but it was like constant day-to-day interference with our standard duties. <laughs> I mean, Long story short, that was me with a camera. Too many donuts every and too many time dumps the, town, to take. the <laughs> town next to my town is like a two mile long town. It's this little town, and there's one road, and the cops pull them over along that road. So all I have to do is drive up and down that, and I'm gonna film them. So I did. I did that like every day, and apparently the police chief just yeah. There's a, there's a whole string of stories from Trayvon Martin to Ferguson, all in that short period. It's really changed people's perception of the police, and they're really starting to pay attention to how these people are trained and how they act on the job. It's great to see. It, it hasn't had any effect on their ability to get away with murder, mm-hmm. but it's had a, quite a bit of effect on the public's perception of them. I mean, Cop Block has, I believe, last check was like 1.6, almost 1.7 the night, million the morning, The morning of the raid... Um, I, I think it was a, d- a distraction ploy, but we were actually talking to an officer for almost two and a half hours, and it was about four in the morning, and it was like 20 degrees out. Um, we were actually freezing our balls. Think he knew? Out. What? Think he knew? He definitely Absolutely. knew. Yeah. He, Absolutely. He, he knew what was coming in he, a couple he was hours? Distracting us. He was distracting us from everything else that was going on. Wow. That, I know that's what it, what it was, but we were talking to him for a long, long time, and I was telling him, I don't like your profession, the way you train, the way you think. Everything. You're a douchebag. You wear a badge, you're a douchebag. Well, we are at the half. We'll be back after a long commercial break. And I promise, guys, we will get to a couple stories tonight. We're just having some great talk. It's different being live in person. I'm enjoying it. We'll be right back with more Cop Block Radio. Amid the catastrophic economic crisis spurred by Tuesday's release of This Christmas, the new holiday-themed album by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, economic experts told reporters today the Christmas CD has quickly plunged the nation into a double-dip recession. When investors learned that one-time screen couple John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John had reunited after 35 years for an album of timeless Christmas classics, investors had no choice but to pull money from markets immediately. We were already on shaky ground with the collapse of the U.S. subprime mortgage market and the reversal financial crisis in Europe, but consumer confidence plummeted after Americans saw the new album with a picture of Travolta and Olivia Newton-John holding cups of hot cocoa. We believe that when other countries find out the album features a Christmas song that pays tribute to summer nights, we could be looking at a global contagion. This is the blackest day on Wall Street in two decades. This is the Onion News Network. Imagine someone in your community getting in their car, turning on the radio, and hearing the Liberty Radio Network. You can make that vision a reality with your own micro radio station. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how you can put our programs on the air in your area. You can have lrn.fm running around the clock, and you can even add in your own local shows. Building a radio station is simple, but programming isn't. That's where lrn.fm comes in. Learn more at broadcast.lrn.fm. That's broadcast.lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. More Cop Block Radio is coming up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, March 30th, 2016. Silver is trading at $15.30 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,232 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $418. 
Antiwar.com reports the U.S. consulate in Adana, the Intralik Air Base, and two other locations in southern Turkey are all facing orders from the state and defense departments for the families of the diplomats and military staff to leave the region. Officials are denying any specific threat, but say the decision is based on worsening security concerns in Turkey, which is facing a growing number of suicide bombings and other attacks in recent weeks. Families elsewhere in Turkey, including the capital of Ankara and Istanbul, are not affected by the new orders. The State Department said they'd been considering the move for several weeks and that the timing has nothing to do with Turkish officials visiting Washington, D.C. this week or indeed time to anything else. The State Department also issued a statement warning U.S. citizens against travel to southeastern Turkey in general, citing increased threats of terrorism throughout Turkey. Southeastern Turkey is where the Turkish military is fighting Kurdish secessionists. For nearly 40 years, Robertson Roberts Brokerage has been a trusted source for buying and selling precious metals like gold and silver. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and have permanently removed the minimum purchase amount for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Robertson Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on buying and selling precious metals and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 800-874-9760 or visit online at rrbi.co. UPI reports just days after the United States and Cuba celebrated a landmark visit by President Barack Obama to the island nation, former leader Fidel Castro on Monday revealed deep-seated feelings about the American leader and the reestablishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Castro made his feelings known by authoring an article that appeared Monday in Cuba's official state newspaper, El Granma. Castro's letter was written Sunday night. The article, which remained at the top of El Granma's front page on Monday, carried the headline, Brother Obama. Castro spent the first several paragraphs of the article addressing Cuban history, his admiration for revolutionary leaders, and his concerns for the nation's younger generation. The second half of the article critiques Obama's presidential efforts, remarks, and what he believes to be the commander-in-chief's intentions. Particularly, the former communist leader slammed Obama for what he believes to be an overly negative and inaccurate view of the 1959 Cuban Revolution, of which Castro was a primary leader. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports public sector unions triumphed before the United States Supreme Court on Tuesday when the justices preserved a vital source of cash for organized labor, splitting four to four on a conservative challenge that had seemed destined for success until Judge Antonin Scalia's death last month. The case, brought by nine union public school teachers in California, had targeted fees that many states for such workers took to pay unions in lieu of dues that fund collective bargaining and other activities. A loss in this case would have deprived unions representing teachers, police, transit workers, firefighters, and other government employees of millions of dollars annually and diminish their political clout. The outcome illustrated the impact on the court of the February 13th death of Scalia, the long-serving conservative justice who almost certainly would have cast a decisive vote against the unions. But by virtue of splitting four to four, the justices affirmed a 2014 lower court ruling that allowed California to compel non-union workers to pay the fees. Ian Murray, vice president for strategy at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, said the death of Justice Scalia has proved a disaster for public sector workers who have their paychecks raided by unions. The court, evenly divided with four liberals and four conservatives, left intact a 1977 legal precedent that allowed such fees, which conservatives have long abhorred. The case reached the high court after a Washington-based conservative group, the Center for Individual Rights, sued on behalf of lead plaintiff Rebecca Frederick, an elementary school teacher in Anaheim, California, and nine other teachers. They argued the fees infringed upon the free speech rights of non-union workers under the U.S. Constitution. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. McDonald's is now offering bereavement prices, and a sexual predator gets tenure. This is the Onion Week in Review. This Wednesday, Samsung announced the release of its brand new really big television. Representatives for the South Korean electronics manufacturer told reporters at a press conference that the guy and gargantuan of an electronics product boasted a variety of new features, including being super heavy and having a screen that was probably a hundred 
eight inches wide for all they knew. We here at Samsung think this new product will appeal to today's consumers who are looking for a television that's really, really huge. I mean, this thing is built like a f***ing Mack truck. You, 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 just, you just really have to see it to believe it. In other news, an important decision is sent up to the company's highest idiot. And an area mother doesn't see why Thai people need to make food so spicy. Today's Onion Review was sponsored by Bamboo Garden, voted the best family-owned Chinese restaurant in Idaho for five years running. This is the Onion News Network. I'll run the first... I'll run the first segment. No, no. Welcome back to Cop Block Radio. This is not my <laughs> fucking show. You're here with Renee Kate. And J.P. Freeman from New Hampshire Regional Cop Block. And we have Ethan, Ethan Glover of New right. Hampshire Regional Cop Block. And Severin <laughs> is uh, taking a minute break. Yeah, a minute um, break that turned into him missing and, uh, a segment of his show. Well, so. well, Whoops. Aw, oh, there they come. Oh, hey, we're back on. <laughs> Don't worry, I got you, guys. I'll just take over your show for you. All right, they're coming back in. I have no idea what the fuck you guys are talking about, but Anarchy After Dark, LRN.FM, catch me, Fridays, 10 p.m. to midnight, because I'll let them have their show back now. All right, kids, have fun. Cop lock stuff. Yeah, cop lock. Woo! That's Renee K. from Anarchy After Dark. Professional. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when we do a live show from the studio. We have all kinds of guests. We were uh, blindsided by the... Uh, the break, accidentally. Uh, what was it? Only six minutes. Yeah. yeah, it was like six minutes. I don't know. I was outside for a cigarette. I was. In, There's I was, no way eight like, minutes went yeah. by that quick. I, I was enjoying. Yeah, uh, you must have been uh, enjoying your time out there. Are you good now? You got your your cigarette in. Yeah, I got ready my, to go. I got my nicotine. <laughs> Listen, don't hate on the nicotine. I was actually going to sit this segment out, but. That's well, okay. Well, I'm glad you're here. People want to hear I, you. I, I want to hear your insight on this story that we have. We will. We are going to do some stories tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we'll get to yeah. it. <laughs> this is this is wild. It was written by Adamo Freeman from Copblock.org. Who's that? He's the founder. <laughs> He's the co-founder of Copblock.org. <laughs> I never met him. Oh my God! You're drinking. This guy drinks more Mountain Dew than I've ever seen. He he came in with a twenty ounce bottle and now he has a can. Everybody's got I a do, vice man. I, I I do know a Nemo actually. Uh, last time he was in Keene, I actually helped him move some stuff out of a storage unit, and he gave me this hat actually. This cop lock hat that I wear was given to me by him, and he paid me in, in juicy other ways. Don't have a dirty mind about that, by the way. Too late. Just saying. Way too late. Um, but yeah, well, Demo's my boy. Well, anyway, the story is about a new invention that was made. It's the stand-up toilet. <laughs> here it is, right here, nice it and shiny. It is a cell phone gun that you can pee in. No, it looks like an iPhone in a case, and it and it full unfolds out to become a 380 cell phone handgun. What the? Sounds like a good way to get shot. It's a thirty-eight revolver. Uh, Three eighty. It says. Is that a thirty-eight? Uh, I don't know gun. Uh, I don't know that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know guns. It's basically, what Ian's carrying. I, I know. I know that when you point at something and pull the trigger, it generally goes away. And bad things happen, like loss of life. Right. Which I don't like. No. I'm not a big fan of guns. Yeah, the only other thing I know about guns is when they're all around, things seem to be very safe. It's true. If everyone's packing, nobody wants to do anything. No, why would they? Yeah, yeah. until they so, have a psychotic break. Is this gun like 3D printed or who's selling no, it? No, it's... Uh, uh, Honestly, this sounds uh, like a good way. If you're, if you're pointing that thing at a cop, they're going to... They want that excuse to shoot somebody. Well, I'm all, I'm all for a second. I've been at the the past three Second Amendment rallies at the State House here in in uh, New Hampshire, right. Con- in Concord. I'm all for the rights of people carrying because if some douchebag comes into a school and all the oh, yeah. all the teachers are, are packing, they're less likely to get through the door. Yeah, you know it, what I mean. It doesn't say, who's... but I'm personally not a big fan because I just don't like the fact of loss of life. I just don't like mm. hearing about people dying. 
I don't like uh, hearing people getting hurt, dogs being shot. I think I think uh, most of all, people in power that carry them should be disarmed. Well, th- this yeah. most of, this really really scares me that this exists because I I have personally seen cases where a cop stops you from filming and he claims his safety was at risk. Now, I uh, this was a friend of mine that had his phone snatched and it turned into a whole thing, but. For the cops now to be able to actually say that a cell phone could be a gun, it could be a weapon, now it's true. I, what does I this had mean a New for York, cop blockers? Does I had, this mean that they're going to be able to – are they going to stop us all from filming and, and call I had an NYPD safety? cop look right in my face while I had a camera right at his face, and he said right into the camera, I'm going to think it's a gun. Put that fucking camera away. He said camera. He said, put the camera away. I'm going to think it's a gun. With his gun pointed right at me. I'm going to think it's a gun. I'm like, okay, you're going to think it's a gun. It's a w- it's put away. Yeah, well, we're going to get Officer Jumpy to, uh, as soon as somebody pulls out their camera thinking, oh, it's it just normal cop block, he's going to say, oh, he, he's coming at me, and he's going to get shot. Yeah. Yeah. So does this, uh, what do you think? Is this going to be open season for us? It, it's another excuse. It's definitely another excuse. I mean, they don't even need an excuse. If you saw the uh, the videotape with me and e- me and Ethan, all he said was "Yeah." That's all he said was <laughs> "Yeah." He just said he committed a crime. He just said it. This after I, he asked me if I know about these apps that have like red and you know, red and blue blinking lights, and I said "Yeah," and that that suddenly means that I was using one. Flashing on the lights, trying to pull people over was his accusation. There's so, nobody else on the road. So if yeah <clears throat> is an excuse to arrest somebody and use a show of force or brute force, what do you think they're going to think if they think a cell phone is a gun? That, that's my worry. They're going it, to- it's another excuse to kill somebody, another yeah. excuse to show force, another excuse. Totally. They're going to – somebody's going to end up dead. A bunch of people are going to get away dead. with it. Yeah. Or – or they're going to go into... I highly suggest that if you're a cop locker or a cop watcher or oath accountability person or a watchdog group that goes after police and video records police, don't get the fucking thing. Don't get it. Don't get what? The... Don't get the, the handgun phone. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, duh. Not advisable. Oh, man, I, I would... That, I, that'd be the dumbest thing for somebody to own. <laughs> Why would you even want that? It's worse than a selfie stick. <laughs> oh man oh lord so i i'm against it i i mean i'm all for people being allowed to do whatever people want to do and own whatever they want to own mm. but i i think that the idiot that thought this up that made this just really gave the police an excuse yeah it doesn't it doesn't give them a legitimate excuse to you know think something's a weapon but with the current state of things, they definitely are when they see something like that. It's definitely putting your life in danger if you're carrying that thing around. Totally. That, well, that's why it's smart for any cop locker to get a real DSL or uh, DSLR or uh, stand-up actual camera, mm. video camera or a camera. Because as far as I know, they haven't made any guns yet it's that look backup. like a real one. Is that a body cam you got on you? It's my backup. That thing record 24 cam. hours? P carries one. I got one. So you're recording me right now? No, it's not on. This is my back. I'm calling the cops. <laughs> Why it's happening, you motherfucker? <laughs> I'll show you. This is a two-party consent state. You're not in an open forum. You're under arrest. And then the feds are going to come into your building and steal all your equipment. <laughs> I don't know if you're in a, in a uh, radio studio. Do you still need consent? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a good, a good question. question. <laughs> we're we're live on the air, so technically it's an open forum. Tec- yeah, it's an open forum, and, and it's live on video already. Well, on the on the YouTube channel anyway. Uh, oh well, conversations for another time. I want to jump into another story that was just breaking today. Jamar Clark was shot and killed by Dustin Schwartz, a Minneapolis police officer, last November. <laughs> Dude, I, when I'm in the same room as you, 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 you just can't keep laughing like that because I'm going <laughs> to... 
<laughs> he was shot last November, and several months after the attorney just released now that he will not face criminal prosecution. Well, we're going to have to get back to that story because we have another break coming up on the uh, <laughs> the Cop Log Radio Show. I figured I'd give Seva a break on I because I'm making him laugh. Uh, I appreciate that. We'll be right back. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidabi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for LRN.FM are, one, let your friends know you're listening to LRN.FM on your social networking profile. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.lrn.fm. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program at amp.lrn.fm. It's my firm belief that the AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented groups. Support all your favorite organizations, but make sure you give five bucks a month to the AMP program at amp.lrn.fm. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Wednesday, gold is $11 lower at $1,233 per ounce. Silver is down $0.13 cents at $15.38 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $413 U.S. dollars. Roberts & Roberts Brokerage has been helping customers buying and selling precious metals for nearly 40 years. How may we help you? Give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate us five stars, then share the link on your social media and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. Hey guys, it's Mark Claire here at LionsofLiberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty, and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at LionsofLiberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We are back. Special episode. 
live from LRN Studios. This is Severin Freeman from Lehigh Valley Cop Block. Rick Gonzalez from Allentown Cop Block. And we got Ethan Glover and JP Freeman from New Hampshire Regional Cop Block. Before we went to the break, we were talking about the Jamar Clark case. The DA in that case just announced that he will not be pressing charges. This announcement comes exactly two weeks after Freeman was praised by many for eliminating grand juries from the process of criminally charging killer cops. I, I read about that story. Did you, I, I, I thought this guy was good that he did this. And then a week later, he's saying that he's not going to charge the killer cop. So what's the point of getting rid of the grand juries if you yourself are going to just then say, no, I'm not charging them? They're back and forth. There may question. be some uh, favoritism there. If he if he knows this guy or has some sort of connection, maybe third party. I mean, th- this just goes along to support the opinion that all of these efforts to reform police are just straight. Uh, it, it's just a gimmick. It's just a show for everyone mm. to feel good about a good story. The grand jury is getting eliminated. And then a week later, he sneakily tries to just get rid of the charges for a yeah, there's, there's an idea that uh, judges and law in general is going to be objective. It's never the case. There's always some sort of personal issue tied to it, Some something going on that's going to decide the case. It has nothing to do with what the actual law, objective law, which I don't think there is any such thing. Uh, of, <clears throat> uh, of objective law. Right, definitely not. I mean, everything is case by case. Uh, when they try to force this monopolized objective law into everyone, it's just something's going to go wrong somewhere. Well, yeah, exactly. It's not objective. That's the problem. It's it's justice is supposed to be blind. But if you're rich or you are wear a badge or you're a friend of somebody important, you won't face the same criminal charges or the same consequences for your actions as, say, an average person walking down the street that just comes across a cop. And that needs to change. That's the double standard needs to change because, you know, it's not fair. And people that don't commit any crimes are getting hurt. Like, yeah, I mean, innocent people that cops know aren't going to stand for the, up for themselves. They're just victims. You know, they'll, they'll write a ticket over a made up charge and they'll just go and pay it. I mean, they they think this is. I mean, this is normal life for most people. They've gotten used to it. Well, I, I know before I took the red pill and, and saw the Matrix for what it was, uh, like I like I said earlier, I didn't know that there was another way. Oh, yeah, this is a ticket I got from a state trooper. Uh, which one was this, JP? I was talking about the ticket and us being distracted by the cops while we're talking to a cop. Oh, yeah, this is a, happened the other night, like right before... Uh, the studios got raided by the FBI. Uh, we were actually talking to a, an officer for like two hours. And I got a ticket. Like when I got back to my car, someone was writing me a ticket for parking there. Overnight parking is, is what this thing is for. I mean, the did streets you, did, are empty. Did you use the I was with the cop card? No, the guy actually just walked off. He he wouldn't hear anything we were saying. Did he, were you in your recognized cop block mobile? Oh, yeah, definitely. You think he might have just uh, saw your car and decided? It's probably retaliatory. Yeah. yeah. He, he probably saw us he just, sitting there. He, he was like, and jackpot, to the guy. got him. Yeah. <laughs> Finally got an opportunity to write these guys a ticket. There is a city ordinance that says you can't park between certain hours. They do that for the uh, the snow trucks, so they can push off the snow and then not get you know not bury cars at the same time. So, so the great thing is you can plead not guilty and subpoena the cop that you were talking to for two hours and make him have to come in. Oh yeah, we were we were held busy by another police officer. This that's on them. It's not like I was trying to park there for the night. That's great. I I, I love being able to get the cops to come into the courtroom and like. Uh, they they parade us around and treat us like they can make us do whatever they want. It's nice when you get into a courtroom setting and they have to follow a certain set of rules. And it's kind oh, yeah. of yeah. It's e- whole even though game. even though it's never really a fair fight, mm. it, 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 it's it's nice to be able to use the little tools that are at your disposal. Yeah, they can't make up laws in court because they know the judge is going to knock any of that down. As long as I mean, you got to be well informed too. Well, uh, what about when you? go into court and oh, I just lost my train of thought. I totally just lost what I was about to say. 
Oh, well. Live on the radio. Live on the radio. I just had a brain fart. Oh, well. I, I just drove all the way here. Come on, guys. Uh, like, feel sorry for me. I was up with a crying baby all night, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to uh, let me get back to the rest of the story about the Jamar Clark case because the officer not only won't be charged, but he's still on the job. Hmm. Why am I not of surprised? Course. According to CBS Minnesota, Hennepin Henner- County Attorney Mike Freeman announced two Minnesota police officers will not be charged in the death of Jamar Clark. Officer Dustin Schwartz shot twenty-four year old shot the twenty-four year old last November in North Minnesota, Mini- Minneapolis. He was shot in the head on Plymouth Avenue, North. Just before 1 a.m. on November 15, 2015. In announcing his decision, Freeman also shared a number of videos previously unreleased to the public. They show a citizen's view of the aftermath at the scene, as well as a series of videos from a camera fixed to the back of the ambulance that initially arrived at the scene that evening. There are videos shared with the district attorney's office. The first video received received was when Clark was shot by the police. The video is pixelated and difficult to see exactly what is happening. But there is commotion. One person is heard yelling. He didn't have to do that in reference to the officer shooting Clark. The second video shows Clark on a stretcher being placed into the ambulance after the shooting. The third video shows Clark's girlfriend on a stretcher being placed into the ambulance. Clark is also nearby She's placed into the ambulance, and Clark looks into the background. The officer's seen also speaking with Clark, who's just off camera. So it sounds like it's a bunch of videos that don't support the cops being let off. There's not enough being able to be seen. They didn't listen to the eyewitness testimony because they were going off these videos Mm -hmm. and saying there's not enough evidence to prosecute. Well, hey, beyond a reasonable doubt, right? But what's reasonable doubt? What does that even mean anymore? Reasonable doubt just means that the cop thought so. Yeah. Well, just another example of officer getting or uh, badge abuse. And getting off on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, more ways than one, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they, they got to collect a check. They got to kill somebody. They... They're walking the street. I personally don't know how somebody, like, how, how you can live with yourself. How do you walk around knowing that a, a life ended because of you? Yeah, they're not totally ignorant of what they're doing. They got they ice be. in their veins. Well, uh, the pro- yeah, the problem is they're training and all the people around them tell them they did the right thing. Mm. And there's nothing to worry about. And they're, they, they had to preserve their own life. They filled them with all this garbage to let them get away with murder. We'll be right back. Top Block Radio. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. 
Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you can't listen to the Liberty Radio Network's internet streams, free satellite channel, or radio affiliates, no worries. You can listen to LRN.FM from any phone, anywhere. Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0309. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Liberty Radio Network listen lines are locked into our stream 24 hours a day. Call 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. And we are back to the Cop Block Radio Show. Sev and me, J.P. Freeman from New Hampshire Regional Cop Block. And Ethan Glover. I believe we got some... Uh, actually, you wanted to talk about the uh, ridiculous... Yeah, while we're on the break, while we're on the New break I, I'm sitting here, I, I look over, I'm like, uh, hey, uh, I, can, I can grab a six-pack when I get out of here. It's been a long day. I could really use a beer. Well, I turn a these guys are looking at me like I'm from another country. Like, <laughs> oh, it's almost midnight. You can't get a six pack. Apparently, in New Hampshire, there are laws that you can drink up until the bars close, but you can't get takeout until can't buy uh, alcohol. Uh, tell tell after, me about after this. After so, eleven, I don't drink, so I don't have a freaking clue. <laughs> I've only so, been here a year. I don't know much about it. I don't drink 41, either. Forty-one years, and I never touched one sip of an alcoholic beverage <laughs> in my life. Uh, so, but it's and, and eleven Rick, o'clock. Rick, Rick doesn't drink either. So eleven so I'm o'clock. The, I'm the lush in the room. <laughs> oh well, I, I I enjoy a beverage every now and then. But I I'm shocked to find out that I'm an adult. It's not even midnight, and I can't get a drink. Yeah, in this the one town. time everyone actually wants to drink, it's not available because yeah, right? because government. Yeah, because of government, because they said so. Well, be be a responsible adult. Buy it early. Buy a few <laughs> packs and wait I had till no idea. midnight I, and drink it then. I, I thought I was coming to a freer state where I could purchase it at all hours of the night. 24-7, damn it. I'd just say no <laughs> to drugs. 
Well, well, the difference is though that it's not a state store here that sells it. What, what kind of stores sell alcohol? Everything. They have packies. They got the New Hampshire State Liquor Store. So, so can I? And, and, if I go into a grocery store, do they yep, sell alcohol yep, here? Supermarket, supermarkets sell it here. Do you know in Massachusetts Just only beer or is it liquor too? Yeah, both. In in Massachusetts, only one shopping center per franchise is allowed to sell alcohol. So let's say Stop and Shop has like a hundred stores. Only one of their stores can sell it. What? Yeah. Well. Because government, right? Because yeah. government. Because it's because mass. Government. Mass. Well, in Massachusetts, blinking your eyes on Saturday between the hours of three and four is probably a felony. Really? That's yeah. pretty. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm coming that's how out here wanting here. the free state, and I'm not feeling very free. I can't get off the air and go have a beer. What's up and with that? There are pros and cons. I think what overall, about, what, what, what about Pennsylvania's state? ridiculous wiretapping laws? I thought New Hampshire had the same thing. Not for long. It should be, uh, I mean, right now it's two-party consent state in New Hampshire, uh, but it should. But you can record an open forum, though, here. Uh, I, I, as far as I know, anytime you record a cop, even if he's with a civilian, it's it's legal in all 50 states. And that's all I'm really worried about. Uh, I did have a situation where a uh, regular civilian started it's with me. Fi- if it, it's 51 and a half states that we have. Well, 51 and a half. Yeah. How's that? It's it's 51 and a half. How's that work? Well, you forgot you you forgot the half state which is the commonwealth which is Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. And <laughs> DC. Okay. They don't count. I think it's all one big state. Let's let's, let's be honest. It's, it's all the same thing. It's interesting to hear about the different laws, though, and the different, like, I, I noticed, uh, I think it was through Connecticut, that they use blue lights, the only solid blue lights to pull people over. They only have oh, yeah. solid blue lights here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, the, red, it's not red and blue? Massachusetts, uh, New York, here. See, see, I'm glad you tell me that, because if I had somebody behind me with just blue lights, I think I would have ignored it. I would have thought it was like an emergency <laughs> vehicle and, like... I would have been waving them. Go around, dick. You've seen more <laughs> videos, more videos than anyone, and you never realize they all have, most of them all have blue lights. I don't pay attention to these things. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I'm wow. T- I, I'm taking notes on, like, funny see, things to See, say maybe and- it is good that you do move here and you only can get alcohol at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, are you saying I have some brain cells, Dad? No. Maybe I think maybe a couple. I, I think you're exhausted from your drive. Yeah, yeah driving I, takes I, a lot out of you. I am really exhausted, especially but I, for old men like me. <laughs> hey, you did the trip up. You're going to do it again soon, right? Yeah, you're, you're talking about coming up. But uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to look up to see when events are. I know Aug- Office of Peacock Part Three. I know August <laughs> is when Music Fest is in my town, and you've never experienced what Music Fest does. You guys got to come up for Bike Week. What's that? When is it? Bike Week. When is that? Uh, Every law enforcement agency in the state shows up with a, at least a cop. They've they've totally shut that like place to down show, to show their bikes off, or or to show up to shut it down. No, no, to, they, they, to they write they, tickets, collect revenue. Over 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 ten thousand to twenty thousand bikers come to New Hampshire during that week. That's insane. But I, I hear it's been I, shrinking because of the cop presence. Because the cop, that's exactly what's happened mm. at Keene State College. Mm. They will show up because of the riots over, you know, in 2014, because of the riots at Keene State College. What started the riots? You were telling me. We about think that. we think the cops did, because if you look at my cop lock videos from 2013 on on Pumpkin Fest, and then look at at 2014 during Pumpkin Fest, these guys were in riot gear. By 11.30, by noontime, when nothing was even going on yet. Now, in 2013, it was fine. Kids had a lot of parties. They had fun, blah, 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 blah. Everybody moved on. And, you know, what happened was there was a cop posted on Blake Street, and these two frat fraternities were having a, a, a bottle war with each other, throwing bottles at each other. It was peaceful at first, and a kid got hit. Somebody got in a fight. 
and then some girl threw a bottle off her porch and accidentally rolled and hit a cop. He runs up on the porch, and mind you, there are thousands of people. Like, you literally have to bump people all the way up. So this cop, with his gear on, goes up to a Blake Street house and drags the chick by her hair, thump, 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 down the stairs, and all fucking hell broke loose from there. It was done by then. And we're talking fires, turned over cars, millions of dollars worth of damage, helicopters in the sky with spotlights making people go home, riot police, pepper balls. Was there a lot of property damage, storefronts? No storefronts. This was all located in the college area. Um, you could see videos. Free Keen's got videos. The activists from Free Keen's got videos. I definitely I have, have to videos. Check that out. It, it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. I was smack dab in the middle of it. I got shot 13 times by pepper balls from paintball guns. And guess what? They don't fucking break. They just hit you at 1400 PSI and leave like welts with blood coming out of it. Yeah. I have pictures of it. Wow. I got pictures of the welts. Yeah, I, I And then I got it. headbutted and had my nose broken by a state trooper and got trampled and hit in the back of the head by a metal light post. Did you catch any charges? No. So so all that violence and they didn't even... They... Oh, hundreds of people got charged. Hundreds of people got wow. charged. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of people. But guess what? You know what they're doing now? During the beginning of the year in, Pens- in, in the Pennsylvania, uh, in uh, September when school opened... Cops were showing up just at a mere noise complaint with 13 cops. You're going to turn this down or you're going to get a ticket with 13 cops. And it's not even a party going on. There might be like eight kids in there. They've got that many cops patrolling around the main street when there's nothing going on at 2 in the morning. It doesn't make any sense. Keene State College has lost over 300 students on transfers because of the police presence. They're losing money. The city's losing money. And, and the, hey, let them screw themselves. There's, it's no fun to be a college kid in, in Keene anymore. Hmm. I, I was like a celebrity doing cop lock there for the past, you know, three or four years. This year sucked. We're cutting to a commercial break. We're going to be back with our last segment. Badges don't grant extra rights and cops suck. Nice doing this live in the studio. I'm having a good time. It's comfy. Thank you guys for hosting us out here. It's great. <laughs> we'll be right back. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. Free Talk Live. The reason why I reject violence, and part of that is there's a humility in it, and that you have to acknowledge that I may not be right. You know, I I, I, I want to have an open discussion with people. Let's let's talk this stuff out. I'm not going to impose my views on you with violence because I will not presume to be so right that I can that I'm just going to force my views on you. In addition, if your views are so valid and so great, then you shouldn't have to force them on anybody. Then you should be able to persuade folks. Right. Uh, this is the, this Make is the truly better. the acid test of a good idea. If it's a good idea to educate everybody, then you should be able to do it in a free market. If it's a good idea without for force, ma- right? Without well, that's force. Just, if you've got enough persuasive ability to convince a majority of people to vote to violently fund something, you've got enough potential to motivate that many people to contribute toward it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.lrn.fm. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit the Liberty Radio Network when you shop at Amazon via shop.lrn.fm.
In Survivor Max 2, school bites, Maximus scavenged through a wasteland swarming with the undead. Desperate to find the medicine he needs, he discovers a community of survivors at his former school. Has he finally found the safe haven he's been looking for, or will he discover that school bites? Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, and read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Did you know you can listen to LRN.FM via our free-to-air satellite channels? We have channels over nearly all of North America and much of Africa. All you need is an affordable receiver and a dish as small as 30 inches. There are no monthly fees. Learn more at sat.lrn.fm. Plus, if you are a broadcaster or want to be one, this is a good delivery method for our content. See our coverage maps and get details at sat.lrn.fm. That's sat.lrn.fm. sat.lrn.fm. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think Excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We are back with our final segment of the night. I gotta say, it's been great doing this live, but it's been a long day. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm debating. Can, is it legal to buy caffeine this late at night in the state? Can I? Is Dunkin' Donuts? I don't still know, open? man. This is some pretty serious stuff. That's but a, that, I think that, you can get away with it. it. It's hard drugs, I know. But <laughs> uh, I, I'm leaning toward some caffeination and some cop blocking. Caffeination and cop blocking tonight. Huh. I'm ready. Let's do it. I do a little keen cop blocking. Let, let, let's roll through some keen. Let's do it. We got we got yeah. we got ten minutes left on the air. Let's, let's, let's go find police. a stop. Yeah. You guys got it like a police radio? Oh yeah. Whoa. I got the uh, scanner in the car. Awesome. Really? So Hook we could, we could literally radio? find a stop. Definitely. And yeah. pull up right Probably. next to it, huh? And pull up oh, next yeah. to it. State, Get right up behind him. We have state police, sheriff's departments, towns all over the state. We get them. Everyone. So you, you hear you heard it here first on Cop Block Radio, an impromptu meetup slash cop blocking event happening right here in Keene in ten minutes with the Cop Block Mobile, three hundred sixty degree mobile. cameras. So, so meet us outside LRN Studios. We'll be <laughs> on our way to film some cops and get some get some uh, great footage. I can't wait to meet one of your local cops. I have I I'm, I printed up. Special baseball card playing cards with me on them. With my stats. Your Just stats? To get, yeah, to give to police. What are your stats? Oh. <laughs> this sounds amazing. I already want one of my own. <laughs> oh, well, I am uh, the founder of Lehigh Valley Cop Block. I host Cop Block Radio. I don't, I don't even know all it says. Uh, you got to have a number count on there with the, the number of blocks you've done or something. Estimated blocks. Yeah, I, I have to update the card, actually, because I would really like to put some of our accomplishments on there, like taking on <laughs> City Hall and winning. But, uh, yeah. Number of chiefs gotten fired, one. Yeah. Oh, you, made, you made these for me and Jess. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I did. I, that's right. I made a few for you while you were up in town. That was great. You gave one to the cop. He, he lost. He, it, it, it's, called the cops. Yeah, J.P. Freeman, while he was in our town, gives a cop one of these. Uh, playing cards that we had made up <laughs> with his information, uh, founder Keen Coplock. Well, the cop didn't know what to do with JP, and he left and decided to call Keen New Hampshire Police Department and say, "Do you know who JP Freeman is?" <laughs> and you could find that video on Allentown Coplock on YouTube. It's labeled "Allentown Police Meet JP Freeman." 
Yeah, that was uh, that. It was and immediately pretty, panic. It was pretty funny. We had wrapped up the night. We're in the car on our way back home, just done for the evening. And JP's phone rings in the back seat, <laughs> and he's like, "Hey, wait, this is a key number." He answers the phone. The at, the, the the police officer in Keene totally told Allentown PD. This is a closed record state, and if it was anybody else, I'll tell you anything you want to know, but not JP. You're going to have to file a report, file a 91A request, go through the right channels, because I want nothing to do with that fucking kid. Do you think that, do you think that they, um, I mean, I know the cops follow my Facebook page. Do you think that they figured out that you were from out of town and they're just thankful you're gone? Um, probably. I don't want to tell him when you're coming back. I don't want to announce like a meetup event. I want it to be a surprise. I've been surprised by the I'll... number of cops who actually pay attention to what we're doing, the watching the YouTube videos and everything. And oh, absolutely. And I... We talked to one the other night that he says he's he's hoping he shows up on one because it makes him a celebrity or whatever. Yeah, I, I have um, uh, the chief of the one of the towns near me that runs the DUI checkpoints. <clears throat> That is the star of my very most popular video. It's up to over half a million views. Wow. <laughs> and he is the star. It's me at his police station schooling him on the law. Mm. And I just, it, it was just beautiful. Rick was there. My wife was there. This was when I first started. Rick had just signed on. At this point, it was my I wife coming, coming out, out with me and blocking. filming me. And she hated it. Thank God. <laughs> oh, you know who JP needs to meet? Who's that? Sergeant Gross. Oh, man. Step back. Step back. He'll tell you to step back when you're filming. <laughs> I would like to see him sir. meet you. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, ju- we Gonna just... need you to step back. We, we went in and filed a full internal affairs complaint against Sergeant Gross for harassing us. And uh, they found... It that, here, here's how fun internal affairs is. They found our claim justified. We were harassed and wronged. His consequence was dealt with at the shift level. Nothing was put in his file. Nothing was done to him at all. His supervisor told him not to do that again. Got his wrist slapped. That was his punishment. Yeah. He he, he got a little... I mean... The same thing's you know, probably going to happen with the rookie officer, I have to sit back and realize too. when I hear this that this guy probably thinks he's kind of t- hot shit. He's, he's, he walks around with this, like... Uh, Want to be Hawaiian haircut? He thinks he's like this hot shit. Ace Ventura guy. haircut. <laughs> so he, it's really, really great when I get to sit back and picture his pride, his ego gets scratched a little bit because the supervisor called him in and said, "You got in trouble with those cop lockers? What the? Like it's supposed to be amateur hour, like getting in trouble with us because they tell them to avoid us. Like they're supposed yeah. to be trained to deal with this, and they don't know what to do around us. It's great." Uh, because you know those cop blockers, if you get around them, and you, they're going to incriminate you. Yeah, same well, thing they do to people. We'll do it right back. Well, well, uh, one of I asked one of the um, uh, high ups at one of my local police departments for an interview, and he said, "No, I'm not. I can't give you an on camera interview because I know you guys just edit all your videos to make us look bad." Oh come on! Like get out of here! I have before. not done that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I might have done that once or twice, <laughs> like just as <laughs> as a humor thing, though, like. Uh, had the cop say something stupid and then had the video repeat what he said like a sure. couple times. But hey, it's for emphasis. It's for fun. Right. We're, we're both educational and entertainment. It's it's a full package at Cop Block. <laughs> I mean, across the board, I think most Cop Blockers never edit anything. It's all raw video. From mo- Most of what I've seen, there's not a lot of editing going on, and for good reason. Yeah, I mean, I edit, I edit my stuff. I, I do put it in intro and all that. But I, 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 try, I try to leave all of the... Uh, all of the contact there yeah. uh, if there's a boring time where i'm standing around for 10 minutes waiting for the cop Worth i obviously out, yeah. edit that out well they they, they cl- it's the only way they can try to save face when they look that bad to mm. someone who's uh, like i'm not a professional like uh, I'm, right i haven't had training i didn't go through school and i can make you look this dumb <laughs> it's pretty nice to be able to school a cop on the law yeah. and on, on things and just Especially a police chief. Oh yeah, that's got to be some fun times. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I I sent him a nice email with all the laws that he had broken, <laughs> <laughs> and he sent back an email acknowledging that he was wrong in several instances. Nice. <laughs> it was it was it was one of the top five cop blocking moments of my life. 
uh, probably best time of my life right there. Uh, that next to uh, watching the guy that told me I couldn't come in without ID into City Hall, watching him have to suck it up and uh, put his tail between his legs uh-huh. and let me in and hand me a badge. What was this a security guard? Yeah, well, uh, I had a whole battle with my local City Hall. You could see it on Lehigh Valley Cop Blocks YouTube channel. It's uh, a whole entire instance that happened. I just went there for an information request, and uh, it, I realized that they had a policy in place that they weren't letting people in the building without ID. So it turned into an entire event for me. It was like yeah. my coming out party for a cop block because it was my <laughs> first official cop block event. I protested for a week. I went there every day with signs. I got uh, news coverage. I got all kinds of stuff. They wow. realized the ACLU ended up uh, making a statement about it saying that their policy is unconstitutional. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they ended up having to change their policy. That was probably one of the uh, – I had so many people tell it, telling me on the news reports and, like, talking trash about me, saying you can't fight City Hall, who's this loser, no one cares, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That moment when I heard that they changed their policy was like, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. like icing on a beautiful cake right Makes there. Makes it all worth it. Yeah. Hey, before uh, before we go, uh, we actually missing someone tonight named Tim Sambo, and it's Bradaboro Coplock, a, a chapter that I founded – um, he had some impacted teeth removed today, so he was like highly inebriated. He couldn't drive, so I just want to give a shout out to him and uh, thanks for thinking of us. And sorry you couldn't come. Yeah, definitely come up in one of the future days that we're here. <clears throat> I'd love to meet you. I uh, hope you feel better. We're coming up to the end of the show. You can find me at Lehigh Valley Cop Block on Facebook and on YouTube and on Twitter and all of your social media needs. <laughs> And you can find me on uh, Allentown Cop Block on YouTube and Facebook. And a shout out to uh, some of my uh, podcast hosts, uh, Oath Accountability. Check them out. And the uh, County County Cop Block. Carbon County Cop Block. Carbon, yeah. Did I say that right? No. Our, our usual co host, Matt. Matt, who, Matt who Taylor. Who couldn't make it down here to Keene, but he is the head of Carbon County Cop Block. You can also check out Oath Accountability Project. That's his other project. Copblock.org, Facebook, and YouTube. Yes, check out the copblock.org slash groups to find a group near you and the store. And the copblock.org slash store to get all your gear, all your copblock gear. Download cell 411, I recommend it. And New Hampshire Regional Coplock and New Hampshire Regional Coplock YouTube channel. Check out Ethan and uh, Ethan Glover and JP Freeman on the, the Roland podcast and the mini cast from